Welcome to the series that combines meta-analysis with fortune-telling. My name is Yugi Joe, and you're watching The Forecast. So it's been another month of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! and of course that means we need to go over everything that's happened in November and try to figure out what's going on in December. Now, there's quite a lot of change that we can expect as we move through December into January. There's an anticipated ban list but we probably won't see that until mid-January um, but there are definitely some cool things that I want to discuss with you guys today and some really cool developments that have happened over the past month. Uh, so let's dive right in with the deck breakdown. Um, so looking at how it is currently, Orcus really much, very much sits on top. Uh, this is from the full month of November data. Um, you can see Orcus sitting on top with the Sky Striker version of Orcus also creeping in there. Now keep in mind that the Sky Striker Orcus was a much later development than the pure version of Orcus. It wasn't really picked up as a meta contender until significantly later during the month, which is why it shows up in such a small portion, but we're going to see some interesting stuff relating to that later. Uh, Sky Striker still maintains a very strong position, Salamangrate too. Um, but some interesting things here, um, you can see that, you know, Danger Thunder and Thunder Dragon, really low in representation over this month. Um, they've been overtaken by stuff like Altergeist in terms of, you know, top, uh, top cut representation, which is kind of crazy. Like, they're on the level with Dinosaur for, just, for the pure Thunder Dragon, which just sort of blows my mind. Um, also interestingly, Draco Sky Striker still is not being picked up by the community as a viable deck option. I don't know whether that's because of the rise of the Orcus decks, maybe the matchup isn't so good there. But it is a very, very strong contender, so if people start playing it more, maybe we'll see it rise up through the top cut ranks. But I just think it's underrepresented in almost every event you go to, you're not going to see very many people playing that. If we do a quick comparison of December versus November, um, so you can see we've got some significant changes. Orcus is down a little bit, but then the Orcus Striker fills up and beyond, so... Um, Orcus variants really taking dominance once again. Uh, Salamangre has fallen behind a tiny bit, but not very much. I think really the important thing is Thunder Dragon has pretty much fallen off, um, and Loonlight Orcus as well has really cut down. Subterra people just aren't playing that as much. Uh, but Altergeist has surprisingly maintained a very strong representation at 4%, given that it has the limitations that it does, and it has the sort of representation that it does. I would have expected Altergeist to either have shot up because it was hugely popular at the end of last month, um, but it looks like people just sort of dropped it after the first few weeks of this month. Um, so let's take a quick look at what actually contributes to this episode. So in terms of releases, all that we've had um, from Konami would be the Advent Calendars, which don't really impact the meta at all, um, and Mystic Fighters, which has some impact on the meta, but it's only just been released. So essentially it, it didn't really impact the December data at all. Um, if we look at the WCQs that we've got for this, we have Exeter Newcastle Newry, uh, Basildon Froome, Great Yarmouth, and Southampton. All massive regionals that contribute towards this. Um, there were some smaller regionals which I couldn't get the data for within the UK. Um, I think these were just events where they were uh, there weren't very many people, um, or there were some changes to the way that they were run, so we didn't get data from those. And in terms of YCS events, we did have Lima, which was a 3v3, but if you've been following along with the coverage, you understand that it's a little bit iffy in terms of trying to pick up all of the deck profiles from that. Uh, however, the coverage for Pasadena and Milan has been very, very strong, um, so both of them are contributing to the data in this episode. Uh, so, Konami Impact's just the release of Mystic Fighters, which of course brings out the Mathmex, the Generators, and the fan favourite, the Dragon Maids. Uh, so, I think this is a pretty interesting set. Um, personally, the Mathmex are really, really high impact. Um, I've been working with my friends on various different rank 4 decks for a while now, um, and I think these are sort of the cards to unlock the going second potential of those, if it actually requires anything more, because Utopia Doubles are already really good and there's so much removal, but um, Dallin Bershon, oh, sorry, Alan Bershon, being able to uh, add any of your traps that you want from the deck is kind of nutty. 
so there's some very interesting stuff to be done with that. The generators are also fairly interesting. I wouldn't say they're necessarily meta contenders, although you might see one or two in your top cuts at regionals. Um, and dragon maids are... Um, they're, they're made for the fans. They're made for the fans. That's, that, that's all you can really say about them. Um, in terms of the deck breakdown and how the decks have sort of moved throughout this month, um, so you can see straight away from this plot, Orcust is once again massively on top. It's actually been on top for much longer than in last month where we saw it was initially very high, dipped a bit and then went high again. Here we see it sort of stays above 20% at the start and then just grows and grows and grows. Um, and do keep in mind, you know, you want to combine that with the fact that, uh, let me just grab the laser pointer we do have um, this Orcust striker here, uh, which does contribute to the sort of Orcust side of things as well. Um, you'll see a few cases where it drops off. In terms of the UK regional season, or like um, representation, Orcust as a Sky Striker deck wasn't super popular. Um, it didn't really gain popularity until the end of this month, when it suddenly became massive because it was just so good in the mirror match and so good against all of the other like decks that you anticipate to face against. Um, whereas just a pure version of Orcust is still very good and very solid, but it just doesn't have that edge in those matches. Um, you can see we also have Striker having very strong representation throughout. That's the orange line here. Um, peaking in Froome and Yarmouth and uh, doing very strongly throughout. Um, Striker is definitely a deck which has reached a point where people are so comfortable playing with it and playing against it that it can be pretty tough. Uh, but you can sort of wield, you know, years of practice with a single deck and take it to events and very consistently top at regionals. Um, in terms of other decks that I wanted to pick out, you've got the Salamangrate, which is this grey line here. Um, it's fairly low for most of it, um, only just pushing past 20% in the Southampton uh, regional, where I think it had two out of the top eight spots, so still not, you know, dominating in any sense. It's a very solid deck for regionals, so, you know, you're likely to see one or two Salamangrates topping uh, almost every regional while the deck exists at the power level that it is. Um, but as we see the meta sort of shift around, you might see that come up a little bit more because it hasn't been dominating the bigger events like the YCS events. Um, so if other decks are hit, then Salamangra can move into that space, just as Sky Striker did in previous formats. Uh, so I definitely think it's one to keep an eye on in the future. Um, otherwise, there's not really a lot to talk about. Most of the other decks that you see here are fairly random, and as I mentioned, the Orca Sky Striker just pushing uh, way, way higher towards the end of the event, uh, end of the, the month. Um, if we have a look at our monthly spotlight, so we're going to focus on YCS Milan, it's the um, event which has the most data available for it. Um, so you can see here we have the round one deck breakdown. Um, interestingly, there's very high representation of the Sky Striker Orcus variant. I thought this was going to be something that only the like top level players appreciated. So I didn't think you'd see it come out in such droves, um, but we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more in a bit. Again, you know, it's a YCS, you're going to have a massive other bracket because so many different decks get shoved into there. Um, but this is one of the few events that you see where almost every competitive deck has a similar level of representation. Um, Pendulum only has 60, True Draco only has 111, but everything else is between, what, 100 and, well, between 144 and 227 is a pretty small tight bracket uh, to compress a lot of the decks. So although there was variety, people were very confident in the strategies that already existed uh, and were happy to just sort of commit to those levels without there being one standout deck that dominated uh, in terms of representation. Um, moving on to the top 32, um, here you can see Orcust has very strong representation, followed by Orca Striker. Um, so that one's quite interesting for me because you think if the Orca Striker had such a dominant presence, then it would already be ahead of pure Orcust, given that the numbers were so similar from the previous slide. Um, apart from that, not too much to say. There's some interesting stuff with the Magical Musketeers in there. Only one Thunder Dragon is very low representation. Uh, as we saw earlier in the video, um, so it's not really a surprise that it's low representation in Top Cut as well, that's just how things work when you, you don't take very many copies of, of one deck to an event. And Loonlight Orcast really pushed down compared to the last few months, um, that there's just one, I think this is one top spot in the top 32 here. Uh, then move on to the top 8 bracket, so 
gone are all of the pure orcast. Only the orcast sky strikers remain. Uh, and this data is taken from the official Konami coverage website. Um, so five Sky Striker Orcas made it into Top Cut. And this is the kind of thing I thought we would have seen earlier, but it's where you know what you're going to be going up against, and Orca Sky Striker has the stronger matchup than normal Orcas in all of those, in those uh, Orcas versus Orca Striker matchups, in all of your expected meta matchups. This is just slightly better. Um, in terms of the advantages that you can generate and the ability to break boards and set up interruptions. Um, having tons of hand traps doesn't necessarily gain you the value that having a Widow Anchor and the ability to build up an engine through Engage does. Um, but then, we do have the Thunder Dragon in here which should have a slightly stronger matchup because there's more searching in the Orca Striker matchup, but it's not superior in any sense because already you have an Orcast engine, which by definition of what Orcast does, is very very good against Thunder Dragon. Uh, one Sky Striker here and one True Draco who made it all the way to second place. Um, I think this top 8 sort of sums up what you would anticipate from the last month of Yu-Gi-Oh! Orca Sky Striker has pushed itself into a very strong position and the other decks just sort of float around and every now and again one of them pushes its way past and wins that matchup. Uh, so deck trajectories is something we looked at in the last episode and I wanted to return to in this one. So what we have is every point of top cut representation from the events that we've mentioned so far. And all I'm going to do is put lines of best fit onto those, which gives you a rough idea of how the deck is picking up or dropping off in popularity over the course of the month. Um, so no surprise is Orcast has a very strong uh, position with one of the steepest gradients uh, that's all you really care about. The gradient tells you about how the popularity is changing. Um, so very strong representation throughout and getting even more popular towards the end, or at least getting even stronger in the sense that it's taking more top cut spots. Um, decks that are falling off, we have things like uh, Sky Striker is falling off here. Uh, Altergeist is falling off on the green line here. And that one kind of surprised me. I thought that Altergeist would pick up in popularity because it's something that was hit in no way uh, was proving really popular in the US um, and I thought that that would translate to more representation in the UK so it's interesting to see that that hasn't happened uh, instead we've had a rise of Salamangrate I did kind of think that that would happen if we saw Sky Striker go down which it did in the course of the last month um, you're sort of trading different control decks for one another um, and Salamangrate is arguably better in certain scenarios um, maybe it's not better overall, um, but given the representation that we're seeing from a lot of Top Cut and people are super happy to play Salaman Great, you can expect it to rise up in popularity, so I think that's more than understood there. Uh, this yellow line here is, <coughs> excuse me, this yellow line here is the Orca Sky Striker line, um, so no real surprise, it has the steepest gradient of the lot massively rising up in popularity, it was totally unheard of uh, at the start of the month, and by the end of the month it's one of the most powerful decks of the format. Um, so expect to see a lot of this moving into the next few weeks or a few a couple of months of uh, competitive scenarios. Um, top techs, so cards that people have been playing and combining with their decks that maybe weren't super popular beforehand or just sort of shone out from this month. Uh, System Down, very very strong against the Orcus matchup and a few others as well, so that was pretty interesting. Uh, people are actually playing this instead of Lancia because you remove the ability for the Orcus player to actually recover at all, which is very nice. Our Skullmeister has come in, now DD Crow was technically more popular, but we did DD Crow last month, um, because people knew it was already really good, but Skullmeister has come in, people are playing it, testing it out, just various different ways to interact with your opponent, and Skullmeister is a great one to stop the graveyard interaction that's super popular at the moment. Uh, then Dragoonity Knight Romulus, I, I thought I'd bring this one in because Danger Thunder, has really taken on a great form in the last month. Um, the way that the deck has been fit together with all of the new techs allows it to do some really, really cool stuff, and often that is underpinned by Romulus or something similar. Uh, so I thought I'd just mention it. Um, definitely worth trying out the Danger Thunder Dragon. Of course, we've seen it's not most popular in Top Cut, so it's not necessarily something that's pushing its way um, consistently into those you know, winning positions, uh, but it's a very, very powerful deck and definitely worth considering. And the last one here is Into the Void. So this has been thrown into all sorts of decks. We've seen it in Sky Striker, we've seen it in Orcus decks, we've seen it in like FTK variants and 
so, tons of tons of decks can actually utilize Into the Void. Um, and if you've been watching and following on with the American theory that's been pushed out over the past couple of years, um, especially Road of the King, then you'll be able to see that Into the Void can be treated sometimes, you know, not, uh, unfortunately it's not entirely all the time, uh, but sometimes can be treated as a placeholder card, much like Upstart Goblin, which in all points in the game is going to net you one card from your deck. Um, so Into the Void, very, very similar. Um, it's a placeholder for any other card in your deck, which makes your deck more consistent. It's just a little bit unfortunate that you have to have more cards in your hand, so it makes it it makes it difficult to justify in every deck. So certain decks can definitely use this. Um, here are some examples from the past month of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! for decks that we've seen. So third place, YCS Pasadena. Uh, I just brought in this um, Walters uh, Salamangrate list because I thought, you know, it's a great example of what Salamangrate has become a very, very standard lineup of monsters, spells, and traps, um, and some variation in the hand traps and some variation in the side deck. The extra deck is almost never changing at the moment. Um, sometimes you see some variation in whether people want more rank fours or more stallios and stuff, but most of the time this is what it will be. Um, maybe there'll be some variation with Super Poly, but Super Poly has gone down in popularity in the last month, so I think this is a perfect example of how Salamangra has formed. Um, next up we have Dominic's uh, top 8 Thunder Dragon list from Milan. Uh, so this is the one Thunder Dragon that made it in. I thought I'd mention this because pure Thunder Dragon is something we really see very much. Um, you've seen from the, the top cut representation it's not super uh, popular, um, but it's a very strong deck and he's managed to combine it with some very cool floodgates in order to utilize the ability of the fact that you could just put out a very big monster and just attack and let the floodgates deal with everything else. Um, then Andreas is first place list from Milan, so congratulations to him. Um, so a very strong example of a Sky Striker Orcus list. This one is actually using um, Allure of Darkness rather than Into the Void. We've seen some people go back and forth on the two of those, or sometimes using both of them. Um, and I think Allure is a great card to have in this Dark Focus deck, or any Dark Focus deck where you need to manipulate your hand just that little bit. Um, of course, it performed extremely well, uh, so there's not much you can say uh, to go against this deck. Um, and then Simon's first place back-to-back -back, uh, Sky Striker list, um, another example of using Into the Void in order to get yourself more consistent decks, um, and then a classic example of using the typical Sky Striker engine with some... There's not so much uh, quirkiness here, it's just sort of perfectly sealed deck. Maybe there's some variation in the side deck, but otherwise, you know, it, it's, it's doing the job perfectly. Uh, in terms of popular trades, so this information is taken from the card market website. So over the past weekend, you would expect most of the impact to be from popular events throughout the uh, month. And what we see here is the most popular trades. And I'll be honest, not much of it seems super impacted by what's been going on. Um, there can be only one is still very high in the rankings and we see some of the Dragon Maze coming in because they've just been released and some of them are kind of hard to get. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone, again, it's been in there for a, quite a while now. I think it's been in there for more than a month as one of the uh, top 10 traded cards on card market. Uh, Called by the Grave as well. But the others sort of... Uh, I, I was kind of taken aback by the fact that Tempest is in here and Saeedra is in here. Uh, but I guess these are cards which are readily available and people are interested in seeing how they can function in different decks. Um, then for upcoming releases from, from Konami, we have just one thing to come in December, and that is the Chaos Impact Special Edition pack with those new promos. I don't think it's super impactful, um, but it will certainly be interesting to see if it raises the popularity of cards from Chaos Impact because they'll be more readily available. Um, and then in terms of UK player performance, so I do try and monitor this um, every month and see who's doing the best in terms of uh, topping events. And this month we had the most tops from Thomas Rose, uh, taking three tops and putting TKB in the spotlight for this month. So congratulations, guys. Uh, I understand that Thomas isn't very well at the moment, so I hope you get better soon. And if you haven't already checked it out, head over to the uh, TKB YouTube channel. They do some really cool live streams and some great um, discussions on there as well. So definitely something that you should check out. Uh, and I guess the channel needs you guys. Um, so every month when I'm putting together this video, I need the help of people like you to bring to me the data that actually fills this out. Because without that, I have no way of knowing what's actually going on. There's no centralized database anywhere. Um, so really it's just interactions with people like you 
that allows me to build out this um, this kind of episode and give you the, the full-fledged data that you guys deserve. Uh, so if you do have any of that data, send your submissions over uh, on the Zach Carnage Facebook page. Um, can't change it from Zach Carnage, Facebook won't let me, so the Facebook page will forever be the memory of what my channel used to be called. Um, but if you're looking for more videos from me, Yu-Gi-Joh is the name, and Yu-Gi-Oh is the game. 